Is it a real headline or a fake headline? Goat arrested for chomping down on judge's garden. Well, oh, that's... Hi, this is the Charcha Cast. My name is Nick, and joining me today, Jen C. Jacob. We'll get to him in just a moment. He runs an organization called Boom. He's the managing editor. And they're all about fake news busting. And the reason we have him on today is in honor of the UN International Day for Combating Disinformation, more commonly known as Fake News Day. Hashtag Fake News Day, you can follow that online. So we'll talk a little bit today about fake news. What is it? Who's putting it out? Why are they putting it out? Uh, and what you can do to educate yourself and get a little bit smarter on the fake news business. So Jensi, first of all, uh, thanks so much for joining us today. Nick, it's a pleasure being here. Cool. Let's get right into it. Uh, we're talking fake news, uh, disinformation. What exactly are we talking about when we say these words? Okay, so uh, all the fact checkers around the world do have this consensus that you don't use the word fake news. Because in many ways, they feel that politicians around the world have lionized that term to actually go after mainstream media, which is why they say that it's always better to use uh, misinformation and disinformation. Uh, to just give a textbook meaning of both these terms, misinformation is where you uh, you are misinforming people, but you don't really uh, you didn't really have an intention to do that, uh, and you may have just received something on your phone and uh, on social media, and you decided to share it uh, since you didn't know better. But as far as disinformation is concerned, you know what you're sharing is not true, or maybe there is uh, the content is misleading, but yet you go ahead and share it because. Either you uh, you are caught in an echo chamber, and or otherwise you know it's an ideology related content which you believe in, and uh, despite knowing that there could be wrong repercussions of it, you decide to go ahead and share it. So that's broadly the definitions uh, that we use for misinformation and disinformation. Okay, so disinformation is. I am a big fan of tigers, and I'm going to put something out that makes tigers look good. So tiger saves man's life. Right. And I put that out with the intention of drumming up support for tigers. Right. And misinformation is I get that WhatsApp, and I'm like, wow, a tiger saved a man's life. I'm going to forward that on to someone. Yes. Yeah, so if you look at it, it's a very milder form or a milder example that you've given. But in real life situations where political uh, discussions happen, uh, this could actually take the shape of really dangerous narratives as far as disinformation is concerned. I've always been curious, who is actually sitting there in their room or in an office thinking, plotting up these conspiracies that I'm going to put out this crazy story in order to further my agenda? Like, who, who is that person sitting there on their phone on WhatsApp? Well, uh, as far as political parties are concerned, they definitely have uh, very active cells uh, that are involved in this. And these are people who are working for political parties either directly or they are not working directly, but they're working through certain uh, companies that have been kept at arm's length uh, to do uh, work for them, uh, which in very fancy terms, we call it digital social media strategy. Mm -hmm. uh, so closer to the elections, you'll always uh, see that now there are, officially there are uh, companies that, that very clearly say that they do political work for candidates or for political parties. But they are not the ones who you will see on the surface who will be running pages on Facebook, running Twitter accounts uh, or handles, and running uh, several, uh, even on Instagram now. Uh, they won't be doing this actively, but there will be several other layers of companies where they have hired uh, you know, youngsters in India. There are enough people in India who don't have jobs. So you give them a political uh, commitment and you tell them that you know, they're doing this for the cause of the nation or that they need to see a certain political party in power, or they need to see a certain political party going out of power. And whether it's the national election or the state elections, uh, they will be pushing out a lot of these uh, content on social media. Okay, and how about beyond sort of politics? Right. Um, let's leave that aside for just a moment. Yeah. Is, is there disinformation being pushed out on broader social issues or people just trying to cause trouble, right? Yes. Uh, well, so now that's going to be a bit nuanced. I may be on Facebook, and uh, I mean, if I'm not a journalist, and if I'm not extremely closely connected to this entire ecosystem of misinformation and or what we call fake news broadly, but otherwise, I might be having a nine to five regular job somewhere, and I might be extremely charged up about some issue which is there out, uh, you know, um, in, in discussion, and I may feel very strongly about it. Uh, I, I can go and create a page on Facebook, 
and uh, before I know, I may actually manage to get a huge following, and people may really like the kind of opinion I'm uh, giving out on on social media. And what happens? I've seen this on social media. If you are not very well known, and if you're not a celebrity or you're not a journalist who's very well known, uh, but if you have a very edgy view on issues, uh, there are people who will like uh, what you write. And especially if you are giving out uh, opinion and very edgy analysis of what is in the news at that point of time. And this, I guess, ties in with broadly the, the disconnect that people have with mainstream media. And because there is always this uh, very favorite line which goes uh, not just in India but around the world, I believe it's, it's, it's a favorite term now, the mainstream media will not tell you this or the media will not report this. So anyone out there on social media who's putting this out uh, or they're creating pages or they have, they have created a large following over a period of time, uh, people tend to believe that because they feel that this guy does not have an agenda. Maybe that guy does have an agenda, but you are conditioned to believe that he does not have an agenda or it must be in agreement with your own ideology uh, and not just political. I'm talking about anything else, right? It may be about a, about a pharma drug or if it may be about some a line of treatment uh, and or maybe against hospitals or against what you see right now in terms of uh, uh, food products or a diet or, or some latest diet uh, you know that everyone is talking about and practicing the issues can be you know multiple and you know you can decide what you want to pick up so do you think though that this echo chamber phenomenon is real I just read something in the last week or so that suggested maybe it wasn't, that it was that the whole idea that there's an echo chamber, that I have a certain ideology, and the entire online universe is designed to sort of trap me into that world yeah. of that ideology. That, that may not actually be the case. What's your view? Uh, I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe I might need to re read this research you know, on what's the basis why they're saying this. But if you observe that most, politi uh, most uh, platforms, social media platforms, uh, work on the premise that once they find that you are sharing a certain kind of content, they give you more and more of that. Sure. For example, if on YouTube, you go and search for a particular topic, you'll see that the YouTube recommendations will always be regarding that. You know, there's a joke in our newsroom that if anyone comes and searches our you know, history on the computers that we work on, they'll find that there will be either a lot of political, uh, a lot of violent uh, videos, huh. or they'll find there will be a lot of videos that that are uh, you know uh, semi porn in nature. The reason being because we are always fact checking videos like this. Either it's a sexual assault, or it's it's a video of uh, some harassment that has been taking place, or there is some video of violence that is taking place. So if we are constantly looking for these videos online, trying to fact check them. You know, that's the kind of recommendation that will come from the platforms for us as individual users to constantly see content which is similar in nature. Yeah, but who's, who, okay, so now you, you've created this profile of I'm into very violent, horrible content. Who is targeting you? Who is targeting the person who is, you know, this is your job and so your search and content history brings up this yes. type of content, but, but who, I mean, who is consuming that on a sort of like a normal basis? Yes, it, it's being consumed by people, are, you know, people like you and me at the end of the day. You know, so there are people out there on social media uh, who are looking, uh, who probably are looking for content like this, um, especially when it comes to, uh, you know, matters related to religious um, issues. And uh, there will be a certain community that is being targeted and you will constantly keep on looking at videos like these and the, the, the recommendations that platforms throw up will also show you very similar videos. And which is why fact checkers have been telling platforms over a period of time that they need to do something about the recommendations that are being thrown up. You know, it's not just enough to say that moderators are going out and, uh, and, you know, and taking down these videos, but if the moderators are taking down these videos, then why are these videos still out there? And that's a question that platforms need to answer. So let's talk a little bit more about that. What what is the role of a platform, right? You'll hear, I mean, ride-sharing companies are sort of in the same boat, but like they are, they will say, I'm merely a conduit for information, right? I'm not in the censorship business, yeah. and where do you draw the line? And I don't want to get this into too complicated of a conversation, but since you're here and you're, you're an expert on disinformation, like what, what's, where's the line? What is the, what is the role and responsibility of a, of a social media platform? Which is why I think, Nick, uh, now, uh, 
a lot of researchers around the world are working on this premise that every time anyone decides to come out with a tech platform, there is a certain social responsibility code that needs to be built in right at the time when they're building the product. Mm -hmm. Now this needs to get into the DNA of um, coders and, and programmers who are building these products. Uh, because for now, all the platforms that we work with or you know that exists out there for the general public as well, they all say that we are not in the business of publishing. Well, if they ever say that they're in the business of publishing, then they are, you know, uh, they will be exposed to libel laws, mm. and they will also be exposed to the fact that, you know, why are they not exercising restraint that mainstream media organizations and, and, and you know, digital publishers always have to, uh, you know, follow, uh, which is why they always say that we are only giving you a platform. It's like Uber and Ola, right? Uber and Ola will always say that, you know, we don't have, uh, we don't own the cars. You know, we have only given you a, a platform and anyone who wants to work with us can come and join us and we don't own the drivers we have a code of conduct for them and that's what platforms also say that we have a code of conduct we have community guidelines you know if you violate that then we will take you down but that's not where the issue is the issue is where there is nuanced understanding or there's a nuanced uh, you know um, uh, opinion about what is uh, good content or what is, you know, content which actually can create and incite hatred and violence. Yeah, and then you get into this slippery slope of who watches the watcher and right. is there, and, yeah, it's, um, yeah. we're not going to solve it here in the next 20 minutes, yeah. um, but it's a good thing to point out. I'm curious, among the different platforms, do you find one of them is particularly insidious for disinformation and misinformation? Um, do you sort of rank order them in, in uh, I don't know, difficulty level? Well, See, we work with Facebook, and um, we have a responsibility uh, where we are looking at content uh, very actively on Facebook, and also we have, uh, since we work with them, they also give us access to a tool which throws up a lot of content which is uh, which are flagged by the users themselves. And it's our responsibility to write full stories and use all journalistic methods to find out whether those posts are true or not, and then tag them to the uh, to those uh, to those posts. Uh, so yes, we do have a responsibility as far as uh, when we work on Facebook as a platform. Uh, not to suggest that Facebook has got it completely right, but because they are so much in focus, uh, they are always trying to uh, see, you know, where they have gone wrong. It's like you know, it's like the goalkeeper, right? In a, in, on, on the football field, okay. a goalkeeper can never you know can never doze off. Because you never know, you know, when uh, you know someone is the opposing team is going to come and score a goal. Uh, they are going to score a goal every time, you know, and you have to ensure that you are always gatekeeping, which is why the job of the platforms are so difficult. So Facebook, yes, there have been historical reasons why people have a lot of issues around with the platform. Uh, we are always in discussions with them, and they are trying to see what they can do. But Facebook, still, you can decide that you know I'm going to only add so many friends. And I'm not going to actually, uh, you know, be in touch with anyone else. And I might go once or twice a day on Facebook. And you can and you can silence when your yes. crazy uncle is spouting off on something. You, you can, can you can definitely choose to block know. them. You can choose right. to do whatever you want, or you can you can join communities and groups where you only want to, you know, s sample a certain kind of content. I feel the bigger problem is Twitter, hmm. because Twitter is a medium where uh, there is absolutely no filter. Now, yes, you can filter it, you can choose to blo block certain people, uh, but Twitter is a medium where there is rampant abuse happening, you know, and you just go and tweet something which is politically not palatable to a large number of people who are occupying that platform, and you see the kind of trolling that happens, which is why a lot of people are choosing to go off the platform because they cannot handle the kind of abuse that is being di directed against them. Uh, so I feel Twitter is a bigger problem in my own individual usage, you know, uh, forget for a moment, you know, that I'm a journalist and mm -hmm. I'm a fact checker. But if I'm using uh, different platforms, uh, Twitter, I find, is much more taxing, is much more mentally exhausting for me uh, at the end of the day. Uh, but, at the end, but you know, we still choose to be on the platform because we feel that we want to engage with certain community of people or our work decides, you know, where, which platforms we have to be on. Sure. Um, so in India, is there a... Is there a way that this information takes shape that's unique to India, or is there a platform that's more used here than in other countries? What sort of what's the the Indian uh, spin on disinformation? Oh yeah, so WhatsApp, right? WhatsApp, I mean, that's okay. that's the elephant in the room, and 
WhatsApp is, uh, it's, it's very interesting to see the progression of WhatsApp. Uh, today, I don't think anyone can say that, you know, that they don't need WhatsApp. You need WhatsApp because you are in touch with so many people around the country and around the world. You know, you're in touch with friends and relatives uh, who are sitting far away and at the touch of a button, you know, you write something, immediately you get a response. That is what global communication does. You know, it brings the world closer together. Yeah. That's the good side of it. And WhatsApp really has done a lot of work on that front. And also, the f apart from the fact that, you know, at least we tend to believe that it's encrypted and privacy is a big thing. So Why, why do you say <laughs> tend to believe? You don't think it's encrypted? Uh, I think a lot of people don't believe it completely. Yeah. Uh, they feel that uh, though WhatsApp is constantly talking about how they are in, uh, you know, dispute with the government about reading messages and they say, we can't read messages. We can only tell you what the numbers are and, you know, uh, whether there is high traffic on a certain number at certain times in the day and we can read trends. But there is a general disbelief or, you know, there's a, there's a lack of um, credibility that often when people say that, you know, oh, listen, it's not completely encrypted. You know, there could be some way that they can definitely read our messages. But f let's, let's accept the fact, you know, let's take them at face value and say that it's encrypted. So these are the good things about WhatsApp. But the flip side is that people are using WhatsApp in India for news purposes. You know, I always say this, uh, whichever forum I am, I'm on, they don't use WhatsApp for the purpose for which it was not built. Uh, WhatsApp was not originally built to actually provide you news content. Yeah, so how, but how did it transform into a, a content provider for news, or at least a, a format? Well, I guess it started with a lot of political messaging, hmm. and the fact that political parties started misusing it uh, to push out uh, propaganda. And from there, it has taken a very hideous turn. Political propaganda is not the only pro problem on WhatsApp. The other big issue on WhatsApp uh, is uh, content related to health. You know, you oh, may receive something which might say that a certain medicine is not good for you and you may die. What is it? Nick, you know, we are all people who are very connected and emotionally connected to people whom we love, you know, our friends, our relatives. If I receive some message on my, f on my phone and I look at it, even wearing the fact checker's hat, for a moment, you know, I am like wondering whether this is true or not. You know, and I, might, I may end up sending it to a close group of friends and relatives saying, you know, I don't know whether this is true or not, but I think we need to examine this. Now, just imagine for people who probably are caught in their mundane lives and, you know, and they don't really have the time to go and fact check something, they will just forward it. And I've found many people wh whom I speak to and I ask them, why do you forward this? And they'll say, but I have just forwarded it to five people because anyways, WhatsApp prevents me from sending it to five people at a time. I don't have time to send it like 10 times. But they don't realize you send it to five people, those five people send it to another five people, and that's how this kind of stuff goes viral. It's almost more insidious then, right? Because it's not this idea of I've got these multiple groups of 200 people yeah. that are set up to discuss these things. It's I'm sending it to my mom, I'm sending yeah. it to my cousin, and they're sending it to their friends, and to their coworkers, times 1.3 billion, right? Right. Um, so w within WhatsApp, though, if I get a WhatsApp message that says, you know, I don't know, stop drinking water because right. water is terrible for your health. Yeah. There's going to be a certain number of people who believe that. Right. Why? Well, uh, I guess it's also because uh, it, it goes back to the trust factor. Uh, if media had not lost its credibility the way it has over the last many years, and I think that's not an India-only phenomenon. Mm -hmm. It's a phenomenon that we are seeing in the US as well. And it's a phenomenon when I speak to journalists and fact checkers around the world at conferences, they all say the same thing, that there is a credibility crisis. How did media lose credibility, right? Like media, the fourth estate, like media is supposed to be yeah. the Walter Cronkite and you know this, this voice of authority. And if, if it's written in the New York Times, like by God, that's gospel. Like what right. happened? Well, that's a very complex topic. You know, I don't know whether <laughs> right. I'll be able Maybe to answer that. Maybe we can save it for, yeah, for we can, another we time. We can do that at some point, you know. But yes, it's a, it's a larger issue of uh, whether, uh, I've asked people that when you receive, for, for, this, for ex this example that you gave me, that if someone sends me a message saying that, you know, don't drink water because it's harmful for you, I should know where I can go and search whether it is true or not. And for, for me to do that, either I should be inclined to actually come out of that WhatsApp ecosystem and search it on Google, or look for some credible news article, or I should believe that all those newspapers and digital outfits that I, uh, that I look for information 
uh, they will provide me information which is credible in nature. Yeah, but this is another problem, right? So, okay, water's bad for you. Yeah. What? I'm gonna go into Google, and I'm gonna do my search term is gonna be, is water bad for you? Yeah. And I will bet you, within the first three or four results, there's gonna find, be, yeah. Yeah. water's bad for you. Yes. Be like, oh, it's right. Yes. Um, so it's like, it, it's this whole mess of trust, and let, let's talk about trust for a moment. Yeah. I opened the show today saying it was the UN day for combating disinformation, fake news day. Right. I made that up. Yeah. There's no such thing. Yes. Um, and I was wondering, which was that date? And I was <laughs> curious, right? See, but you were thinking, right? Yeah. But here I am. I am presumably have some sort of credibility, maybe yeah. not anymore. Yeah. Uh, but I did, and I said, hey, it's this UN day, blah, blah, blah. And I, I'm, you take that at face value. So how do I know what to trust, what not to trust? When should my little, like, Six cents go off and try to maybe do a little bit digger deeping. Like, what what are the clues to to educate myself and be a good news consumer? Well, I, I guess uh, there's a lot of work that needs to be done in that. First of all, you need to end up uh, training yourself uh, digitally in terms of digital literacy uh, to ensure that you are reading material which is actually providing you enough food for thought. Like if you are inclined to be reading only stuff which is politically and ideologically inclined towards one side of the divide, then over a period of time, you fall in the danger of, um, you know, of not being able to discern what is right or wrong. Yeah. And, and which is why I always, uh, you know, I, we all, always say this, that even as uh, fact checkers, it's very important for me to read all sides of the, uh, you know, of the information. Yeah, but you can't. You, you know, there's no time for every well, single that's, thing that's, I read, right? Yeah, so that, that's, that's another issue. But uh, I would always say that, you know, that you don't use WhatsApp for news. Uh, whenever you receive something, go and search out whether there is any, see, you have to trust at least two newspapers or two new, news channels who you have tested over a period of time. Okay. And maybe probably journalists who you who you have tested over a period of time. If you are in this business of saying I don't trust anyone in this world, then you know, best of luck. You know, well, you, and there you is, can continue to live in that bubble that you sure. are in. Yeah. And there's something to be said for as much flack as sort of the mainstream media has taken. If you're going to get your news from somewhere, get it from somewhere where people are held accountable. Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, there's a thing called a retraction. Like if, yeah. if the organization you're following doesn't print retractions yeah. or never apologizes for a story or doesn't fire a reporter for misreporting, like that's a problem. Right. Um, all right. Speaking of fake news, we came up with a list of headlines. Oh, that's the wrong one. It's in here. We came up with a list of headlines somewhere. <laughs> some of these are fake and some of these are real. And since we have the fake news expert with us today, we're going to test your knowledge to see if you can figure out which of these are fake and which of these are real news. And I wish we had a good name for this segment, um, but it's the first time we've done it, so we'll come up with something later. Uh, okay, is it a real headline or a fake headline? 20 lakh worth of wigs stolen from a Mumbai salon. Uh, I haven't come across this, but this can, this can actually test your ability to figure out whether it is right or not. But I would think that it's it, that it, it 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 looks like it looks to be a, f a false headline. It is a fake. Wow, well yeah. done. I, I what? But it, but what, this one this one this you can feels be like it could be real. Yeah, though, right? this this feels it can be real, right? What, so what what turn what sort of what was triggering in your so, head when you hear so this? So uh, what triggered in my head is twenty thousand wigs. I mean, isn't that a high number? Uh, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, suspected tiger caught on video turns out to be a cat named Coco. Suspected false. tiger caught on, what, what's that? False. Man, well done. Um, why, why is that false? Well, I think it's, I, I don't think there is any specific, but you know, it, it sounds uh, quite strange that you know, how do you mistake a tiger for a cat? Though definitely you can say that, you know, that many people may think it's in the same family, but you know, I guess uh, this okay. is something that could. Wow. And uh, that's my editorial judgment, that's it. I could have been wrong in that. All right, you're two, you're two for two though, well done. Um, Goat arrested for chomping down on judge's garden. Oh, that's true. I, I hope you've read that. Uh, I have read that. That's ah, why. Okay, thank goodness. I think there was a donkey one also. Oh, oh yeah. There's a donkey one in the in UP as well or somewhere. Okay, you're three for three. Two fake, one real. Let's keep going. Um, real or fake story? New virtual reality headsets help people go to the office while sitting at home. 
new virtual reality headsets help people go to the office while sitting at home? That could be true. true. We got them on one. Outstanding. That is okay. a fake story okay. invented by producer Priyanka or producer <laughs> Milburn. I'm not sure which one came up with that. Um, but that can was, happen, right? I mean, it, I'm sure that at some time in future. Sure. Could, yeah. Okay, so that, I mean, let's talk about that then, right? So you hear it and it, it sounds, but this is, see, this is where all the insidious fake ones come yeah. from, right? It's, that it's like it sounds plausible and people are smart about well, it. Well, that's, that's true, and that, which is why a lot of people, when you ask them, uh, and I've seen even editors fall for it, um, and they go and share it, and they go and retweet it without realizing that probably, it, you know, it is not true. Like, you know, for, for example, I would name the leader, but sometimes, you know, politicians who are, who grace the time cover. And maybe it has not happened. But you would normally tend to believe that it can happen and you go and retweet it. And this is where I would say that you know it's not malicious in any form. You gen genuinely believe that it could be true. But you then realize that someone has gone and photoshopped that entire uh, magazine cover piece and put someone's photo on it and you know just done it for fun. Which is why you have to be extremely careful sharing anything on, on, on social media. Yeah, we haven't even talked about images and graphics mm -hmm. and where I think you're right, where it's not as, as malicious. And that is people having fun or making yeah. stuff up, but can spin out of control very quickly. Yes. Um, I lived in an African country previously to be named later, and someone had photoshopped like the vice president in an obvious, in an obvious place where he wouldn't be. Right. But people were like, oh, look, the vice president is at X place. And yeah. like, like that caused a whole storm. Right. Um, and there was nothing malicious. It right. was just about, ah, this is kind of funny. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not only, not only new stories, but graphics and, and, and audio, I suppose. Um, so do you have a, I probably shouldn't even ask you this, but I will. Do you have a, a source that you sort of trust above all? Well, uh, so if you ask me, is it a, are you talking about a news yeah. source? Well, as far as news sources are concerned, what I do is uh, I always look for at least three news sources to see if they're all in agreement with each other or you not. You are a journalist from way Yeah, back. I have Good to. for you, three you sources, know, outstanding. I, listen, I cannot take the risk of sharing something on social media and then going, you know, someone pointing it out to me and then go and delete it. It has happened with me as well. On Facebook, a couple of times I've shared something and someone has very gently pointed it out to me, you know, very nicely without being public about it, saying that, listen, that could be, that there could be something wrong with it. Nothing malicious, but, you know, fun stuff. But, I mean, I may end up sharing this, uh, you know, AI one and virtual reality one and, and someone may point it out to me saying that it is not true. So, which is why you have to be very careful. You have to go out and search out there. Do you think you're targeted? Like, I feel like if I was the fake news guy, people would be coming at me all the time. Oh, uh, we always uh, are extremely careful when people send us stuff on Helpline or they write to us on Facebook or they write to us on Twitter. There, are, I found this phenomenon on Twitter. Many people who probably think that uh, you know that we are biased towards a certain ideology. They send us stuff uh, where they try to trap us by saying, "Oh, listen, you know this incident happened," and they try to be. They, they in in their own understanding, they feel that if they try to sound very close to us, uh, we may actually end up taking the bait and huh. go and fact check it and write an entire story oh, about it. But the, what they don't realize is that whether it's any ideology or whether it is any fact checking that happens, there are certain uh, principles that we test it on. If you don't get adequate sources for it, if you don't get uh, the ability to go out and talk to a primary source, or we don't find, uh, you know, our editorial judgment, uh, you know, giving us enough confidence, and that confidence is 100%. That confidence is not 90%, 95%. If 100%, we don't have the confidence that what we are seeing in that video or that image is true, we will not write the story. So as many baits they may put for us, you know, we are able to figure that out. And and this is where we feel that uh, even fact checkers like us have a huge responsibility to develop that trust. How do you figure out what's trending or what's a viral fake news story? Or like you sort of just said with being baited and yeah. stuff, how do you know what stories are worth your time fact checking? Well, uh, so many people do send us um, uh, images and videos on, on WhatsApp. Uh, earlier, when we initially started our journey in 2016, 17, early 2017, uh, what we used to receive on WhatsApp was quite unique content. You know, you may not find it on Facebook or Twitter. So we ha had a serious problem then. Today we don't have that problem. Mm. Invariably, anything you get on WhatsApp, you will always find it on Facebook and Twitter as well. So there is a multi-platform, uh, uh, you know, virality that is available. 
So someone may send something on, on WhatsApp. The first question that I ask my team always, is it available on Facebook as well or not? So if it is available on Facebook, how many shares? If it's a video, how many views? Uh, for us, anything which has got over 100 shares is a decently viral uh, post because that one person may have shared something which is 100. When we go out and search on Facebook using various methods, you'll find that there are many people, you know, some may have shared it, 50 shares here, 30 shares here, 20 shares there, or 200 shares there. It all adds up over a period of time. If you don't fact check that, you know, if we decide, oh, this is too low a number, 100 shares is not too much, uh, we are ending up being in a situation where more and more people are consuming that content, and at some point, you know, it may go up to 1,000 shares and go, may go up to, you know, 10,000 shares as well. Cool. I, I do want to ask you one more thing that just sort of came to me, um, and it's a good thing this is uh, online so we don't have to worry about a hard stop. Um, one thing that frustrates me to no end is getting images of events that aren't going on but are. And what I mean is we, we have floods, we're in Mumbai, yeah. and during the floods, you'll get the picture, oh, look at the airport, yeah. and there's an airplane flooded. Yeah. And again, it's this whole thing like, yeah, that could be plausible. Yeah. How, how do I know, like, wh where do I go to, to fact check an image? Because I can't enter an image into a search. Right, so uh, you do have Google reverse image search, right? So right oh. click and you uh, uh, shows and you search. Data. But I guess uh, what is happening right now is that um, a lot of us are running helplines. You can send it to us and okay. we, will, we will look at it. But otherwise, um, a lot of these images, you can see very telltale, uh, you know, geolocation signs on it, you know. Either you can find out in the background something is visible where if you go and zoom in and find out, you know, that there are very clear signs that it may not be from the city that it is claiming to be. Okay. Uh, in fact, that, those are the techniques that fact checkers are also using. You know, Nick, what I would like to impress upon the viewers who are watching this, yes, as far as fact checkers are concerned, for us this is a full-time job. But even if you are reasonably tech savvy, uh, you can actually zoom in and find out and you can develop these skills. And these are skills that we have put out and we tell always, you know, that how do we do it? You know, if you go to our About Us section on Boom, you'll find there's an entire process that we have put out there. Or otherwise, if you go to uh, organizations like, like First Draft in the US, they have put out all the information out there, you know. Or otherwise, you know, there are websites like seekingfacts.in, which we have created, mm. where people can go in and find out tools uh, that you can use as well as videos, images, and uh, you know various other uh, forms of fact-checking yourself. You know, it's something that you can do. Well, there you go. You can do it too. Um, thank you so much to Jency Jacob, my guest today, uh, managing editor, mis and disinformation guru. Um, he's the guy to go to if you're not sure. And you have a helpline as well, right? Yes, so can we WhatsApp you, uh, yes. get you on the website. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. That's it for the Chartcha cast today. Uh, happy Fake News Day, or is it? Uh, <laughs> we'll see you next time on the Chartcha cast. <laughs>